Elon Musk's latest tweet about a starship going to 18 meters is stunning. Let's talk about it. In the middle of a flurry of tweets yesterday, somebody asked Elon about going to a 12 meter starship. Other people have talked about 12 meters or 15 meters. And Elon said, no, the next generation is going to be 18 meters. This is amazing. Just to give you a quick hint, this is where we're heading. I saw this and I was nuts. And it even knocked one of my uh, favorite people on there, Chris BNSF, said, just seen that getting back onto the chair, I fell off. This is amazing stuff. For a quick sense of why this matters, on the left we have a representation of Falcon 9, which is a 12-foot diameter. The area inside the circle is 113 square feet. With Starship 1.0, you have a 30-foot diameter, or 9 meter, and you end up with 700 square feet of area inside the circle. Going to 18 meters, which is the circle on the far right, gets you 59 feet in diameter, or 2,800 square feet. Um, what happens is the, the cylinder walls, the, the diameter of the rocket, um, doubles with the diameter, but the area and volume inside the cylinder walls increases with the square, or quadru quadruples in this case. It might be easier to picture this by looking at what the rockets look like. So on the far left, we have Falcon 9. In the middle, we have Starship 1.0, the version that's being built now. And on the right, we have Starship 2.0, the one that Elon suggested. Um, you can see that uh, assuming we don't increase the height of Starship 2.0, I'm not sure what Elon's thinking there, uh, but if you don't increase the height, you end up with a much wider uh, rocket you get a lot more boost, you can fit a lot more uh, thrusters underneath it, a lot more engines underneath it, and that benefit of having lower cylinder wall mass while still having more thrust means you're going to have a much more efficient rocket. You're going to be able to get a lot more up into space, or you'll be able to carry a lot more passengers, which may be what Elon is thinking, either taking people to Mars or point-to-point -point travel. This brings me back to another stunning tweet from Elon back in June, where he said they were aiming to produce 500 Raptor engines a year. And I was thinking, 500 Raptor engines a year? What are you going to do with 500 Raptor engines a year? You've only got 35 for Super Heavy, which is the booster, and 6 or 7 for Starship. How many of these things are you going to make? What are you going to do with all those boosters? And this is just another example of, Elon thinks big. He thinks big in, in production. He thinks big in the size and what you can do with it. So the first idea would be, well, you just make more starships and super heavies. But with 500 Raptors a year, that would be an awful lot of those things. The bigger idea is, well, let's make them bigger. And how many Raptor engines can we squeeze into the Super Heavy 2.0? How many Raptor engines can we squeeze into Starship 2.0? And what can we do with all that extra thrust and especially if it's more efficient, that means you're going to be able to launch with a lower cost per kilogram. You're going to be able to carry more passengers either to Mars, to the moon, or point to point. All very good stuff. Now here I've just suggested you put 120 Raptors in Super Heavy 2.0 and 20 Raptors in Starship 2.0. I suppose you could go higher to 130 or 140 Raptors in Super Heavy 2.0 and 24 or more Raptors in Starship 2.0. We don't know where Elon's going, but this is a good first cut. Now, to some extent, what really matters is the second stage. Uh, super heavy, whatever you do, it's coming back to Earth. It's not carrying anybody. It's just getting you up to speed. Um, and Starship 2.0 could be the big deal. And the question is, what can you do with all that um, diameter, with that volume, with that potential thrust of adding more Raptors, can you finally get single stage to orbit? I don't think that's Elon's goal. I don't want to put it past him. And then going point to point, he talked before about going 10,000 kilometers with the current generation of Starship. Well, if you want to go point to point and it's more efficient and you carry more passengers, then if you go single stage, just Starship 2.0 with more passengers, you can go greater distances, you can go anywhere on Earth, which is the goal. One other possibility that occurs to me, now keep in mind I'm a total amateur, but does the increased mass without 
the increased height? Does something about the, the dynamics of this mean that it'll be more stable and more able to take off more reliably when there's higher winds or more difficult weather conditions? Does this increased size, mass, whatever, make it less vulnerable to those weather problems, make it more reliable and a, a more reliable way to deliver passengers point to point like airlines do now? That's been a big question about Starship doing this, and this may be an answer or a partial answer. If you like this video, you should probably follow Everyday Astronaut. Uh, if you're interested in me, I mostly talk about uh, law, police, um, drunk driving, uh, other issues related to that. Uh, maybe I'll make more videos depending on how, the, how well this one does. I hope you all liked it. If you did like it, subscribe here. Thank you very much.